So today I will talk about phase space and non invariant phase space and it's a very important concept in the particle physics. So before defining or talking about the phase space, first of all, let us consider two types of important phenomena in particle physics. Important phenomena in particle physics. So, first is the decay. And second one is the scattering. So, suppose A is a particle and it decays to last number of particles 1, 2 and so on up to n. And similarly, A and B, they interact with each other and after interaction, they give rise to various types of particles 1 to n. So diagrammatically it can be represented like this. A particle is coming and it will go like this. Right. So that's what will happen. It is 1, 2, it is 3 and it is a particle. So incoming particles are represented by I state and resultant means the outcome will be represented by f similarly here these are the two particles a and b they come closer and interact and after interaction they give us one two and so on different particles right one two n and here it is also represented by i and f and i and f represents the initial and the final states respectively and final state is a multi-particle state there are multi-particles are there so let us now define phase space because phase space is relating to the final outcome as we will discuss it in this lecture so let us now define phase space So first of all I will talk about the general definition. In general, phase space consists of consists of all position and momentum variables. All position and momentum variables and I will talk about it in the later so in particle physics in particle physics phase space calculations for phase space calculations for particular interaction for particular interaction are useful to extract information to extract information about interaction between particles interaction between particles in the final state right so that's what phase space tells us in the particle physics and phase space Phase space is closely phase space is closely closely related to calculation of transition rates. 
right so let us define that what is the meaning of the transition rate we have also discussed about the transition rate in that lectures transition rate that is probability per unit time probability per unit time for a particular reaction for a particular reaction for a particular reaction to take place and this is denoted by WFI or W and this is expressed by using Fermi golden rule right so WFI or simply W it is 2 pi over H cross it is F H prime I that's mod square into F let us call it as equation number 1 and here in natural units this can be written as 2 pi H prime I and the whole mod square into f it is here h crosses one for the natural unit this we have to keep in mind right so here i and f <coughs> are initial and final states initial and final states and f h prime i is a matrix element s as we have discussed in the the lecture where we uh, uh, where I talked about the S matrix, so is a matrix element from transition from for transition from I to F initial to final state, right? And this is caused by means this transition from I to F is caused by a perturbation of Hamiltonian perturbation of Hamiltonian Hamiltonian H prime right and f is called here the multiplier factor f is called this f is called phase space or density of state factor right and f is a function of is a function of total energy of the system system e and mass of the individual particles in the final state so about this i will talk about it later on that how phase space is related to the total energy so equation one can be written 
in two different forms means this is the equation number 1 and this equation number 1 equation 1 can be written in two different forms I'm not going about those forms in detail here I'll just briefly talk about it so different forms so first is that W is equal to 2 pi m prime mod square the row e and let us call it as equation number 2 call it as equation number 2.1 or we can also express it as like this 2 pi m double prime mod square and r e this is 2.2 here in equation 2.1 m prime and rho e they are not invariant under Lorentz transformation but in equation 2.2 .2, m double prime and r e is invariant under Lorentz transformation right so but I am not going to talk about these things in detail but here I will discuss now the non-invariant phase space means this is equivalent to this equation so now I will discuss now let us now discuss discuss non invariant phase space so for a particle For a particle position is represented by for a particle position is represented by position is x comma y comma z and momentum is momentum is represented by px py and z px py and pz thus state of motion of a particle thus state of motion of a particle is represented as as x comma y comma z p x p y p z that means i am talking about the six dimensional space and we call this six dimensional space as the where the position and the momentum both are taken collectively is known as phase space right in other words I can say that in other words in other words we can say that say that each point in phase space each point in phase space corresponds to 
corresponds to definite state of motion of a particle definite state of motion of a particle right so because here i am talking about the position and the momentum collectively and in quantum mechanics we talked about position and the momentum collectively uh in uncertainty principle so and what is that principle that principle is delta x into delta p x is greater than equal to h in some books it was written like this or in some where it was written like this h upon 4 pi so i am considering this part so according to this it is delta x into delta p x is greater than equal to if i multiply it by 2 pi and divide it by 2 pi then it will become h cross so that means i can write down it as delta x into delta p x is greater than equal to h cross upon 2 pi sorry 2 pi h cross it is 2 pi h cross right and in natural units we can write down delta x into delta p y is greater than equal to 2 pi it is in natural unit right and if we consider a three dimensional case means where delta x is this delta y delta z delta p x delta p y and delta p z then what this represents this represents the volume of a space cell it is volume of phase space cell or it is also called as elementary cell and since this part is equal to 2 pi and delta y and delta p by is also 2 pi and delta z and delta p z so therefore this volume of phase space cell this is equivalent to 2 pi h cross raised to power 3 or we can write down it as the 2 pi raised to power 3 in natural unit so this we have to keep in mind so thus thus number of final states number of final states n1 available for one particle particle for given phase space so it is basically n1 equal to means it is the vo total volume of the phase space divided by size of the elementary cell so it is basically total volume is basically the it is the integral dx dy and dz dp x dp y dp z whole divided by 2 pi h cross whole cube and this can be written in the natural units as a simple way and they can also put together so therefore n1 can be written as d cube x and d cube p its integral over 2 pi raised to power 3 
and it can be written as 2 pi raised to power 3 integral of dqp here what we have did because d cube x its integral is equal to b means here what we have assumed that particle confined to a geometrical volume b to a geometrical volume b right so let us go back uh, yeah. so here this is equation number two sorry equation number three and uh, let me call this as equation number four uh, yeah this is equation number four and this is equation number five so this is n one so let us now define density in phase space so let us now define let us now define density in phase space as number of states states per unit energy interval so rho 1e is equal to b n 1 over d e here i talked about energy it's because e square minus m square is equal to b square right so keeping this in mind we have expressed it in terms of the energy so this is in short in short is called phase space for one particle right so let us now extend this to the n particle so let us extend this idea to the n particle so let us now extend extent this to n particles and the number of final states number of final states n n it will be product of number of final states for each particle right so for that I can write down that nn is equal to 1 over 2 pi raised to power 3 whole raised to power n product of i varies from 1 to n and its integral d cube x i and d cube p i and here we have used v is equal to v i and let it be d cube x i its integral so if we do it like this then we can write down that n n is equal to v over 2 pi raised to power 3 and whole raised to power n 
is equal sorry into integral of product of i varies from 1 to n dq pi and let us call it as equation number uh, let me rewrite down the equation numbers uh, so it is equation number 6 and it is equation number 7 and let us call it as equation number 8 so this formula gives this formula gives this formula gives number of available cells available cells in the final state final state for a system of spinless particles for a system of spinless particles So this is for the spinless particles but if particle i has spin si then for such a system if every particle having spin then n n it can be written as v over 2 pi raised to power 3 whole raised to power n integral product of i varies from 1 to n dq pi into i varies from 1 to n and 2 si plus 1 so for the particle having spin this can be represented like this but for the sake of simplicity but for the sake of simplicity what do we do let us ignore volume geometrical volume volume by putting v is equal to 2 pi q it's just like uh, normalization and ignore spin part also so if i use this in this equation then what nn will become this n n will become integral pi i varies from 1 to n it is dq pi simply and let us call it as equation number 9 so now rho n e it can be written as d n n over d e so it can be written as t upon d e integral pi i varies from 1 to n dq pi call it as equation number 10 since momentum is conserved since momentum is conserved momentum is conserved that is what is the meaning of momentum of conservation sum of initial and final momentum will be equal to 0 where i varies from 1 to n and let us rewrite down it in a different way i varies from 1 to n minus 1 and it is p i plus momentum of nth particle will be separated out minus p is equal to 0 so from here i can write down that p n minus p minus summation p i i varies from 1 to n minus 1 it must be equal to 0 
so from here the momentum of the nth particle can be represented like this pi right so let us now define keeping this equation in mind let us define a drag delta function so if i define a delta function then keeping this equation in mind i can write down that dq pn delta q pn minus p minus p i where i varies from 1 to n minus 1 right that's integral will be always equal to 1 now extend equation number 10 up to uh, n minus 1 so consider equation 10 only up to n minus 1 so if I consider it in this way then it can be written like this d upon de integral pi i varies from 1 to n minus 1 dq pi and what do I do it can be written like this d upon de and if we multiply with it 1 this is 1 and the value of 1 will be this so that means we have incorporated momentum of the nth particle into this with the introduction of the delta function that is why I did it in this way so therefore I can express it as integral pi i varies from 1 to n minus 1 it is dq pi and it is dq pn delta q p n minus p minus summation p i i varies from 1 to n minus 1 and if we open this bracket this will become minus and this will become positive and if we put these two together so therefore this equation can be expressed as d upon d e integral into product i varies from 1 to n dq pi delta q pi summation i varies from 1 into p right that's what we are getting let us call it as equation number 12 means this delta function can be written in this way so let us now introduce energy conservation to it so let me rewrite down this equation again therefore what i got rho n e is equal to d upon d e integral pi i varies from 1 to n and d q p i and delta q summation i varies from 1 to n p i minus p let us call it as equation number one now let us introduce energy conservation to it let us incorporate energy conservation to it so for this this equation tells us the energy conservation so it is the energy conservation constant so to incorporate it let us define a delta function so delta function is defined like this is equal to 1 so let us now consider the left hand side of it so left hand side is basically e i minus e into d e and its integral now let us take the energy derivative so that means d upon d e of this can be written as e i minus e it is d e and this integral will cancel out it so it is equal to del e i minus e sorry delta 
so therefore this means that d upon d e integral delta e i minus e into d e is equal to delta e i minus e but using equation number 13 its value will be 1 right from here so that means d upon d e is equal to delta e i minus e that's what we are getting right so therefore equation number 12 can be written as written as that rho n e is equal to its integral pi i varies from 1 to n d q p i delta q summation i varies from 1 to n p i minus p into delta e i minus e where summation i varies from 1 to n right so this is the equation number 14 so therefore this is the required expression this is the required expression for or the required formula not expression formula for non invariant space and in this we have incorporated both momentum and energy conservation And sometimes it is also known as phase space integral. Right. So this is all for this lecture.